Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Everyday Strong with Dr. Michael G. Daniels. This is your host, C.B. Baker. Uh, we got a great topic today, Dr. Daniels. The topic today is angels and fallen angels and the influence on our lives, or our daily walk around earth. So this should be very interesting. Um, I can't wait to get into this because, uh, you know, I love stuff like this. Mm-hmm. All right, so Dr. Daniels, um, the scriptures you gave me to um, to look at, was Ephesians Ephesians 2, chapter 2, verse 2, and Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. I will put that in the description so you'll be able to see that when you're um, watching us on YouTube. Mm-hmm. All right, so Dr. Daniels, I know you've uh, chomped at the bit to get to get this um, get this out so we get people safe out there in, in the world. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I tell you, one of the things that, that, that – um, I think that we don't look at all the time is the impact of of our decision making, you know, and and how it impacts our lives. And oftentimes, you know, people are thinking that, you know, when they have ideas or when they're thinking a certain way, their first thought is it's coming from them. Right. Uh, And that's not necessarily so. And and in fact, um, what, what the Bible teaches us is that oftentimes how we think, how we act, and not just us, but other people around us, how we think and how we act is really because we are being influenced by, by Lucifer or, or Satan, if you will, or one of his, 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 uh, his, his angels, you know, one of his fallen angels. And the irony of it is, is that we oftentimes think of a fallen angel um, in the context of something that's gory, you know, something that's going to be so mean, evil looking horns, all this kind of thing, scary at night, so forth and so on. That's not what the Bible tells us. You know, you might be in a grocery store at the checkout counter and, 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 and the fallen angel might be the one checking you out, right. you know, at the checkout counter. You might be at the club, you know, and the fallen angel might be the bartender right, or the person that sends you a drink that to entice you to do something, you know, it might be the person on the job that entices you to do something or gives you some bad information. It could even be a family member that, that, that the fallen angel has influence to lead you in a certain direction, you know. And so the Bible tells us that, that that's something we, all, we have to constantly be on lookout for because Satan is subtle, Satan is smart, and he knows how to get to us in ways that we don't normally anticipate. Because, see, we think he's going to come to us in a way that's going to scare us. But scaring you is not going to get you to follow him. Right. So that's not what he does. He knows how to entice you. He's been around a long time. And he knows how to entice you with that which will make you want to follow him. And even if you think about how you entice Jesus, he didn't entice Jesus with anything that was horrific. Right. He enticed him by saying what? Let me offer you all these wonderful things, right? Right. It's just that Jesus understood, and because you know what, he is God in flesh, so therefore he turned them down. But most of us would not have. Right. <laughs> right. Now, <clears throat> I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if the our ability to follow, un- unknowingly following you know, Lucifer and Satan being the prince of this world is because we don't know, really truly know how it feels to be in heaven. Is that part, could that be part of the issue why it's difficult to break free? Sure. I mean, I I think it could be, but I think also if you, you know, think about this, that in, when, when, when the Bible describes the realm of, of Satan's authority, right? It says he's the prince of this air or the prince of this world. And so if he's the prince of this world, the scriptures suggest that the way this world runs is really based on a concept that Satan is kind of um, managing per se, or he, he has great influence over it, right? So the things that we aspire to, really, if you think about them, are opposite of what heaven tells us to aspire to. So he set up a societal norm that makes us want to follow his direction. And for most of us mentally and intellectually, we don't think that way. In our minds, it's got to be just the opposite. But if you think about, you know, I, I, let's look at politics just for a brief second, just to, so I can make this point, right? 
there's a huge emphasis right now that says that socialism is the worst thing that could ever happen to you, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that that is the antithesis of capitalism. They don't look at communism as being the antithesis. They look at socialism. You know, people are dead set against socialism, right? When in Acts, what they established, what Christ established was socialism. Because socialism says what? It's not the one that's important, but the whole, right? right? So it's all for one and one for all, not all for himself. Capitalism says you for yourself. You know, you become this, you become that, and 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 the best rise to the top. Right. Socialism says everybody shares equally. Right. Well, in the in in the Book of Acts, that's what the apostles and all of them agreed to do. Everyone that came into the fold, they put all that they had into the pot together, and they all ate equally. They all shared equally. The same thing with the apostles that followed Jesus. They all put everything in, and they all shared equally. See, that is socialism, right? right? So that would tell me right there, if Jesus said that's a good methodology to follow, that means it must be a good methodology to follow, right? If In Acts, that's what the apostles did. In fact, one individual or two people in Acts, they end up being uh, 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 taken out of this world by the Holy Ghost because they lied about, being a part of the socialistic society that they, the apostles set up. Ananias and Sapphira um, gave less than what they said they had, you know. And so the point that, that Peter made to them was, well, why would you lie about it? If you don't want to be a part of us in this manner, just tell the truth. Right. But since you lied, the Holy Ghost is going to take care of you. And Ananias dropped dead and his wife dropped dead. Both of them dropped dead because of them not following the methodology that they right. said they was going to follow. Now, that goes against everything that we hold dear in this country. Mm-hmm. everything. So that would say to me then that the, the, the realm that Lucifer has established as being the model for us, we follow and it goes against what the Bible teaches. So <clears throat> how do we recognize an angel and fallen angel that comes across in our life? Well, according to the Bible, you can't recognize them by sheer looking at them nor by questioning them, nor by giving them a standardized test, right? Because the Bible clearly says, be careful about how you greet and meet people because unawares you could be entertaining an angel. So that tells us right then and there that, you know, we don't have the wherewithal to be able to identify. If the angel themselves don't identify themselves to us, we won't know if they are or or, or, or not. And, and, and so... It, it, you know, the, the thing is, from, from, a, from a, a, a scriptural standpoint, that's why the Bible says that we should treat everyone as if they might be, right? Whether they are a fallen angel or whether they are an angel that God has sent down to take care of us. Right. If the angel is sitting down to take care of us and we treat that angel like he's from God, of course, we're going to be pleased. He's going to bless us. If it's a fallen angel and you treat that angel, you know, with love and kindness and everything, well, that angel is not going to try to tear you up. You know, that angel may not give you more benefit, but you never know, you know, because he might be trying to draw you over to the satanic side. So he still may do some things to make you think you ought to follow him, right. like giving you something positive so you will follow him, you know. But what you have to look out for is anytime someone is leading you contrary to the Bible, you know, then that, that right there sends up a red flag just to say, hey, you know, that's why the Bible says, follow me as I follow Jesus, right? So if they're not following Jesus' gospel, then I have to st- take a step back and say, well, you know what? You may be one of the fallen angels trying to get me to go against Christ. So, and it, maybe this is just sympathetic in me. Why aren't the fallen angels just saying, you, just, just say, you know what? <laughs> it's been it's been two millennia. We ain't took over yet. You know, we need to stop following Lucifer. Well, I would say I don't see Lucifer as losing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't saying he's won, but I'm saying, would you say that the majority of people on earth have are truly following Christ? No. Well, then that would say to me yeah. that he's gaining <laughs> some ground. You know, I mean, if you would take a poll, 
Right. You know, and they vote on it. He Lucifer might be winning right now as far as numbers go, right? Right. And, and so, you know, I, most people that I know, even good, solid Christians, m- much of their their actual actions are not consistent with the gospel because they have been influenced by um, fallen angels and their doctrine but don't actually realize it, okay? For example, um, how many people do you know who even are Christians that if you slap them, will slap you back? <laughs> Most of Most of them go slap you right back. Okay. Now is that a is that, is that a Jesus concept? <laughs> no, it's not. Right. It goes it goes diametrically opposed to right. him, right? Right. Right. So if, if my point being is that most of us that influence that the fallen angels have, have passed down through generations and generations is so embedded in us, it's hard for us to get out of it. You know? I gotta tell you, my mother taught me if somebody hits you, or you hit them back. Hit them back. Yep. Right? Now that's not even though she was in church, right? Going to church and and, and love the Lord, singing on the choir, shouting all that kind of stuff. And the Bible clearly said, "Turn the other cheek." Mother said, "Anybody hit you, hit them back." Right? So that tells us right there. See the influence of of those fallen angels has been so well instilled in us because we we didn't view the people that were teaching us as being fallen angels. And I'm not saying that my mother was a fallen angel. Uh, but I'm just saying, someone taught somebody that taught somebody right. that taught somebody that taught her, you know. Right. And so the, the 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 genesis of those teachings were so inbred in people that they didn't view them as being mm-hmm. contrary to the gospel. They accepted them along with the gospel, and that's the biggest trick of the enemy is that he can use that kind of stuff. So even though you see it in the gospel and you know the gospel goes against it, you still accept it. Because right. of how it came down to you. You know, one thing I will say, um, ever since I made the decision and been called in to go into ministry, I have read things over again. And I was like, I ain't know that said that. Mm-hmm. And you've hit me to that. It's like, yeah. And then you'll say, you need to go look at this other book. Mm-hmm. And w- what is it? Are we not comprehending when we're reading, when people are reading the Bible, this is, I mean, this is a real question. I, it, like why are we as people can literally look at the exact words of what it's saying and then not really comprehend what it's saying? Well, the Bible says that Satan has the ability to blind us, right? See, when we think of being blinded, you know, we view it in a way that, um, is earthly, I guess. So, and worldly. And again, that's to me is also how Satan has helped us to be, see it that way. So we won't see what he's doing to us or his, 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 his workers are doing to us. Um, because it's hard for us not to allow that influence. It's just, it's just hard, right? And it's hard because the Bible says that the controlling force on this earth is the prince of darkness. See, that's the controlling force. And that's what Ephesians 2, chapter chapter 2, verse 2 says, that that prince of this air runs the world, you know. But as human beings, for reasons that, that defy logic, we don't like to think that way because it makes us feel bad about who we are and what the world is, right? You know, I, the, one example I give people all the time is uh, Santa Claus. Okay, right, Santa Claus, right? Now, let's, let's look at Santa Claus for a second. Um, why in the world do we act like that Santa Claus is such a noble entity? Yeah. Why do we act like teaching Santa Claus is not um, uh, antichrist, not heresy? But see, we've been sucked into thinking that it's okay. Do you know how many Christians are very comfortable teaching their children there is a Santa Claus? Yeah, and, and I'm one of them. I know. I, know, you, I, know, I mean, think about right. it. Look at all the churches that even have Santa Claus coming in there, mm-hmm. right? 
well, wait a minute, let's think about this for a second. Why in the world do you think there's a holiday that competes with your celebrating the birth of Christ? Mm. I ain't never looked at it that way. But it does, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Because if the Bible says, thou shalt have no other God before me, right? Right. Then is that really what we teach our children about Santa Claus? No, it's no. not. We teach, we teach our children to worship Santa Claus. Right. Write this letter and ask for these, um, these gifts. You better be good, right? Mm-hmm. Why? Because Santa Claus is coming to, to town. town. Right. See, we're not saying be good because of God. We're saying be good because of Santa Claus. So we having a child loving Santa Claus more than they love God, right? So that's that that is anti Christ. Right. Cause what because we could easily write this had the child write the same letter to God. Like <laughs> like nobody's business, right? Okay. <laughs> now, here's what I'm saying, saying this. And I'm saying this not not to not to make anybody feel bad, but just this open honest communication, right? I love my mother in law. And Lord knows I love my mother-in-law. But when my child, when Chad was uh, two years old, and I said to my mother-in-law, don't tell my son there's a Santa Claus, because I'm not going to tell. I'm teaching my opposite. You know what she said to me? You are going to ruin him. You are going to ruin his childhood by telling him that. Now, I know she had the greatest of intentions, because right. I know she loved the Lord. Lord knows that woman loved the Lord. You know, they own the bay in the Bible more than I'm in the Bible, and I'm a pastor. But because Lucifer has so subtly indoctrinated us in that way, right. it has messed us up, and we don't see it. See, we don't see it. The decoration of trees, the Bible clearly talks about not decorating trees. What do we do? Turn around, decorate a tree. Decorate trees, okay? And then we sing a song. Oh, Christmas tree, <laughs> oh, Christmas tree. It, it's almost like we're worshiping the tree, right? which is a form of idolatry, right. right? But it's become so subtle that we do it. So that's what, I'm, that's what I mean when I say when the Bible says that this Lucifer is the prince of the air or, the, or this world, he says he dominates this world because his concepts, his ideas, that which take our focus off of our, the creator, our God, is so indoctrinated into the world that we live in that it seems natural to us. And so when things seem natural to you, it's easy for you not to see the truth. Right. Because what's not true seems more natural than what's true. Yeah. I had never looked at it that way. Because it really, really, me, why would I say a person other than myself brought my kids gifts in the house Mm -hmm. and is not Jesus himself? I know. It is the thing, right? <laughs> it's, it's the other kicker, right? Why lie? <laughs> right? Why? And think about this. We know it's a lie, but we, we justify the lie. Right. Then we tell the kids what? Don't you lie to me. Right. But we lie to the kid about right. something that we know is going to break their little heart when they find out we lied to them. Yeah. And when it'll be easy, so easy to tell the truth. And which is what? We celebrate Christmas because of this, and I'm going to give you gifts because I love you. Right. Cause I mean I shut down the Easter Bunny before you even got out the out, out, out the gate. I was like, well, there ain't no Easter Bunny, you know. We would give you an Easter basket, mm-hmm. but there ain't no such thing as Easter Bunny. I shut them all down. <laughs> I, I I shut them down for a different reason. It won't because I, I mean to get, don't get me wrong. I do love the Lord, <laughs> but see, my father shut it down, <laughs> and since he shut it down, I was like, well, okay, it, right, it's what it is. He told us at an early age. Let me tell you something. Fat white man bringing nothing to this house. Okay, I am the one that brings <laughs> up to this house. Okay, he did it because he had a problem, I guess, and got mad at somebody. Right, and came home one day. I'm telling everybody what's going on around here. So I'm just saying that you know, that's, but that's how Lucifer gets us. And so it doesn't just impact it that way. It impacts our marriage. It impacts our employment. It impacts how we make decisions about money, investing, wealth, all those things. Because he has set up this system in this world that impacts us that that base level that we don't even think about. Right. I mean, think about the fact that the reasons why our marriages are in peril is because of the influence that he has put put upon us. 
and the reasons why, right. you know, the, 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 the jobs that we have and all the structure and all the things that we do are in peril. But it's because he has set up this system and he has set it up so that we feel bad if we don't, if we don't conform to the system. Right. And others will make you feel bad if you don't conform to the system and you totally go the way that Christ went. Now, if, if this, 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 this is the, the dynamic, right? We see it in the Bible. We see that Jesus, when he did not conform, we see what happened to him. Mm -hmm. We see how they looked at his apostles when they said, we're going to stop conforming to what you all think, and we're going to follow what Jesus says, right? And we shout and hallelujah that they did it. <laughs> and then turn around five minutes later and go back to doing what we were doing. we go back to conforming to the world. And see, that's why the Bible says you got to live in the world, but be not conformed to the world. Because the world has been set up based on how Lucifer wants us to think. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's one thing, one thing's for sure. Once your eyes open up to certain things, you stop. Like, for instance, I've been in a, like, in a funky mood for, like, two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I could tell that I was like, I'm complaining a lot about stuff. I said, okay, you know, the deacons meeting and everything. Y'all told me this would happen. I said, okay, I recognize it, but I don't know how to get rid of it. Like, when you're having a bad day, it's like, okay, one bad day turned into three bad days. It's like, okay, wait a minute, what's going on? So I said, just keep, you know, keep pushing forward. I actually told my wife, I said, I said, this process, if anybody's been to church and you go in the stairwell, mm -hmm. it's not an automatic light system like over at the uh, Family Life Center. Right. You got to hit the light switch. Mm -hmm. One day I went in there and thought the lights were going to cut off. I got halfway up the steps, no lights cut off. Right. But now I can't see my way back down mm -hmm. or up. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I, it's pitch black. So I said, now I got to feel my way till I find the door. That's what I told my wife. This is the type of situation when I'm in. It's like, okay, I have now got to, I, I have faith I'm going to get there. Right. I'm going to feel my way through until the, hit a light and hit, open the door, light, you know, and then I'm in the hallway. It's like, but we as people, if we don't recognize that, that can happen, that you can have one day turn into three bad days to three bad years. And well, I won't say they don't recognize it can happen, right? Because they do. We are, we do recognize we can have long slumps, right? Right. And you ask any mama that got four or five kids, or <laughs> you know anybody that's working at McDonald's, or anybody, you know, it's not that. It's that we don't recognize why it happened. There you go. Right. Because our concept is, well, what's going on? You know, it's like this don't make sense. But see, that's why I say how, how subtle Lucifer is. That's, that's his subtlety. Because when you stop and think sometimes about why you're in the funk, right, it'll be some little small thing that will cause you to question the direction God has told you to go in. Right. Right? And it'll seem like going in that direction is counterproductive. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's that... Okay, it, it, it all make you feel like, you know what? Why am I wasting my time? It's not going to be appreciated anyway. Or these folks just the devil is anyhow, and you know, and he'll make you, he'll have you thinking and looking that way, and so you'll question everything around you as being bad and you being the good one. Right. And when you do that, again, see that's that worldly thought process though, and then it takes us away from what the Bible says we ought to be thinking, because it says we ought to be the humble one. Thinking that, wait a minute, you know what? My job is not to for you to be good and me serve you. My job is to serve you when you're bad because I'm the one that's here to do that. But that's not what happens. And that's why. I'm just saying because he's the one influencing us. And we don't, but but if you don't get that, if you don't see that, you stay right there. Right. Because he still got you, got your thought process. And again, see, it happens in all aspects of our lives. Happen in your marriage. There are people right now that's mad at each other mm -hmm. and can't figure out who going to say I'm sorry first. Right. The event is over with, but they're still not talking. You know, they got a 10-day non-talk pack, you right. know, with the devil. Don't, <laughs> don't talk to them for 10 days. And right. The devil doesn't sit, whisper in their ear and say, don't talk to them for 10 days. And 
they said, devil, you're right. Now, they don't know they were saying you're right to the devil. They thought they were saying you're right, to, you know, you're right to themselves. Right. But really, they was telling the devil, you're right, devil. I ain't going to talk to him for 10 days. So it's dead silence in the house. You come in, you ain't talking to each other, and y'all ain't having no good time, and nobody understands why. You wasted 10 days of your life. Right. And don't really know why, and you feel bad, and don't know why. And that's all it is. It's, it's, it, I'm, I'm telling you, what you said earlier is so important for people to understand. And that is, you said, how do we recognize the enemy? You know, how do we recognize it? Right. And that's what I'm saying. You recognize it when it goes against the word. Because otherwise, you, you can't. You know, your doctor could be a part of the, could be influenced by the, listen, anytime your mama can tell you there's a Santa Claus. <laughs> right. That mean what? Mama was influenced by the enemy. Right. And if mama can be influenced, your doctor can be influenced by the enemy. Your right. daughter can tell you something that that's, that that the enemy has pushed him in the direction. It don't mean it's going to kill you, but it still may be anti-Christian. Right. And the one thing that they also mentioned in Ephesians that one of the weapons used is the word of God as your mm-hmm. sword. And I thought that was very powerful because, like, you know what? You, you put on all the armor, but if you ain't got no weapon to fight nothing back with, you I mean, you're able to defend yourself you know, for is taking a blow, but what can you use to give a blow? Like, how can you fight it off? Mm-hmm. And and like you just said, if you don't know what's in the Bible, you won't even know if what the person is telling you is biblical, godly based, or not. Right, and that's why I say it's what your sword is the word of God, right? right. And, and 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 that is so true, you know. Most of us, and I'm saying us, right? Even knowing the word of God, don't use the sword. You know, we we defensive, not offensive, right? When you're taking a lot of defensive blows, I don't care how great the defense is, it wears you down Mm -hmm. because you still want to score some points, right? You 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 at least want your defense to become an offense, right? Uh, But if you always are defensive, you always on the defense. You get tired and you give up, and that's what people do oftentimes. They just give up. Yeah, I might have faith. I know a lot of people got got that, got their faith, got faith. But you know what? You get tired of using faith all the time. They get tired, and you know when they get tired, you know what they do? They forget faith and they start cussing you out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because they, 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 you know, right. I've been faithful. For, I've been faithful all the time, and you still, you still act like a fool. I'm gonna cuss you out now, right? But if you had the word, right. see, it would change it. You know, if you, if you can put the word on it. Again, I'm, I'm human like everybody else do. And there are times even in my life where, you know what, I know the word, but I won't use the word. Yeah. You know, that frustration still gets you. But if whether if you use the word, it would change it. Okay, I got it now, right? You know, and, 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 and that's the thing. But again, because the devil is not just influencing other folk. That's the thing that I come to understand. No, I'm influenced by, this, by Lucifer as well, you know. And, and I don't always know exactly if it's him or if it's, if it's me. I don't. That's why I pray all the time because I don't know, you know. There are a lot of things, like just like sometimes I tell myself, you know what, you need a day off. You need a day off, brother. You know, right. you, you know you're going through some stuff here. Well, I don't know if that's the devil telling me to stay <laughs> home. <laughs> or, right. or if the Lord is really telling me, hey, listen, it is time for a break. So I gotta, that's why I, I had to go on knees and pray about it. Now, I can tell you this. Sometimes I'll go on in and pray about it, and you know what? Somebody from church will call me up, and I'll know then that, you know what, I'm not supposed to take that day off because they, they'll let me know you need it there, right? And so I'm just saying it's sometimes, even with me, sometimes it's, it's the same thing, you know? So, and I got to admit, there have been a couple of times I listened to the old man, you know, and said, you know what? I ain't got to go to Bible study at night. Oh, you, oh, you playing a... a, a. <laughs> You know, they they play in North Carolina. When, when the next time I'm gonna see North Carolina? Because right. you can't get a ticket down there in Chapel Hill, right? <laughs> you know, that's, no. that's the same thing I had told. I had told Sherry the same. That's like I said, you know, at home, you you know, you're mm-hmm. Michael. So I said, you know, Michael, um, had to go to a funeral. Had to do a funeral on Monday. Had to do something on Tuesday. I said he ain't never got a day off. <laughs> that's like I said, and I told us this is stuff people don't see what pastors go through. Literally working almost seven days a week. Well, it's and it's true we do, but you know, but you know what? 
I, I look at it like being a parent, right? How many days off you get? Zero. I, that's the thing. See, you get zero right. days off. And I'd be trying parent, to go all the right? way to Jamaica to get a day off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you still ain't getting, still still ain't getting, getting a day off, no. right? Because you're still calling back and checking, right? Right. So, and, but but that's, a, that's the thing I'm saying, right? But see, the world will tell you you're supposed to get a day off. Right mm -hmm. now, I'm not saying you don't. The Bible tells us clearly, right? You need a day of rest. The Bible tells us that we do. All of us need a day of rest, right? But the thing is, you know what? Um, the question is not when we need a day of rest. The question is, what day are we resting on, right? Yeah. Like, for example, again, I don't mind saying this for the, for the people out there because they know me. You know. Is that that one time when ODU played? Uh, 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 it wasn't UNC. I'm saying UNC was actually Virginia Tech, but I just use, use it, playing Virginia Tech. But same difference, right? How are we gonna play Virginia Tech? So anyway, we played Virginia Tech in basketball. My thing was, Lord, no, I need a day off. <laughs> <laughs> now was I really resting at the game? No, well, you, no, no, no. You know I won't rest at the game. game. <laughs> I'm yelling. <laughs> I'm screaming. <laughs> Right, I, I was my throat was just as messed up as if I had been in Bible study. Actually, more really true, right. you know, because I'm yelling and screaming now, mad because it cuts the game, right? So, um, you know, that's all I'm saying is that you know, it won't a restful day. Restful day is go home and chill out, right? Restful day ain't go there and fight all that traffic. Oh Lord, no, that place was jam packed. Yeah, I'm fighting all the traffic and all this kind of stuff because you know it was a sellout. You know, all this kind of stuff. You know, so I'm frustrated with that. I'm coming home when I'm mad because we didn't win. But I'm coming home, right? <laughs> and I'm still getting to fight. They got to fight the traffic again. That wasn't restful. Right. But you know, nonetheless, I told myself, mm -hmm. you know what? Lord, understand. He want me to take the day off. Really, that was that was that was Lucifer saying, "You deserve it. You deserve it." And I was I was co-signing it. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Lucifer. I do so how it. so how are you supposed to find out if God wants you to live an abundant life? Here on earth, why are you here? Mm -hmm. How can you decipher the difference or discern the difference between that abu the abundancy? Is it godly base or Lucifer giving you something? Well, we'll see. This is the thing. Um, I, I don't recall Jesus saying that he wants us to live an abundant life. Now, I know people say that. But that's what Jesus said. Okay. Right? Jesus said, if they persecuted me, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna persecute you. Yeah. Right? That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, you know, if you follow me, you gotta be willing to take up the cross. So that's not, I mean, I'm not saying it's not abundant, but not the way we view abundance. The way we view abundance is what, you know, money, you know, laughing, big house, big car, all that kind of thing. He didn't say that. Right. right? He didn't have he didn't have money, he didn't have big house, he didn't have, you know, uh two, three mules, he all that. He, right. he had the that. exact opposite of right. all of that. Hey, isn't that something? See, the exact opposite. Now, I'm not saying he's telling you had to be poor, but my point is, he said, "What seek ye first, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these other things will be added to you." See, but we do the opposite. We seek ye first all the other things, and then we want to get heaven added in, right? So that's the that's the deal. You know, if I'm seeking heaven first, then God will make a way for me to have that which I desire. He'll make a way for me to get that. But you know, and I know 99.99999% of people don't seek heaven first. You know, we say we do. Granted, so right. all y'all are going to say, I seek heaven first, pastor. Yeah, sure you do. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, and the crazy thing is in my, in when I'm doing coaching, I have them fill out a, a sheet of paper and every last one of them, the first thing they put is number one goal is go to church and be closer to God. And I immediately go to them and say, you, you sure this is true? Because if if it is, I'm gonna put it up here on your on your plan to be at Bible study, Thank you. church, right, every week. Let's put it in perspective, okay? And then again, now I know there's some folk gonna blame COVID for this, but let's just be real, okay? Enoch has approximately 1,400 people that are members of the church, okay? Now, the average Sunday attendance is not 1,400 people, right? The average attendance is not a thousand people. Okay, so if your primary goal was getting to heaven and the Bible says forsake not the assembly of the saints, then guess what? At least a thousand out of the 1,400 would be at church every Sunday. Okay, if they weren't inside, they'd be outside. Mm -hmm. They'd be somewhere trying to figure out how to do that. 
Now, for those who watch me on, on YouTube saying, well, I watch on YouTube, you may. But let me tell you something. A thousand people don't watch on, on YouTube. YouTube. Right. It's, it, live is maybe about yeah. 50 at the most. Right, right. So <laughs> by the time you look at the entire, you know, g- gamut, I would say for that day, you might get about, uh, and I look at it every week. So for that day, that's why I go about how many look at it that day. And it's about 250 right. that, that views it online for that day. Right. Right. So if you add that to the people that come to church, right, on Sunday, and now we're up to about 350. So that's what you got about 250 online, about 350 in the church, right? So that means what? We're running about 600, right? Well, 600 ain't 14. Right. Right. It ain't even half. It ain't 50%, right? So I'm, that's all I'm saying. So if all the people that say, you know, have, you know, Bible study would be at, at a minimum, Bible study would equal Sunday. Mm-hmm. And it does not equal Sunday. Right. So that right there says something. See, but everybody goes to work almost every day. So you don't take off from work like you take off from church. You know why? Because you're seeking money first. You're seeking capitalism first. Right. You're not seeking God first. It's the opposite. And that's why we do what we do. That's why I'm saying the influence of Satan has taken over and made things normal for us. And so because it's made normal, nobody questions it. And we go along with the program. And that's why the Bible says, what well, it says that he is the one that's the ruler of this world because yeah. he's made it seem normal. Nobody looks at it as being bad. We look at it as being, that's the way the world is. Now, now I will say this in seminary, um, I'm popular because mm-hmm. I'm one of, because I work with you mm-hmm. on keeping vir- virtual mm-hmm. and then the church is open. Mm-hmm. And so they're asking me a whole lot of questions before class starts, like how, how things going. But a lot of the, the pastors that are my professors and, and <clears throat> ministers that are in the class, mm-hmm. a lot of their churches are not open mm-hmm. and don't plan on opening anymore right yeah and so is that really the plan is this the whole thing like so i guess the question i'm asking is this the devil's plan to make sure that church attendance because it has plummeted Mm -hmm. i feel like you know at least in america i don't know about globally but in america i could feel it Mm -hmm. from the people posting stuff like that is plummeted what is some of the ways that we can get it to come back or is it not going to come back the way we... Well, let me say this. Um, I went to Nationals baseball game because I bought some tickets. And the, um, I don't know where you're going with this. The, the, um, <laughs> <laughs> so when it opened back up, they gave us two for ones. You know, and uh, actually, because I had good seats, I was able to make mine three for ones. Mm. Yeah, and still had good seats. Right. You know, so... Um, anyway, we get to the game and looking out and lo and behold, there are no empty seats. Mm-hmm. There are no empty seats. None. Sold so, out. So apparently, <laughs> apparently folk who ain't coming to church ain't got no problem going to the games. Right. Right. Now I'm not saying some of the people in the game don't go to church, but I'm saying people don't have a problem sitting beside each other in the stands. Mm-hmm. Now, I was watching uh, Monday Night Football uh, last night. Disappointed, but I watched it, okay? And um, I looked up at the fans, the stands in Seattle, Mm -hmm. and they looked pretty full to me. Right. Okay? So that would suggest to me that the rain and the wind (laughs) did not stop folks from coming. And I'm not, granted, they were outside. All I'm saying was jam-packed. I went to a comedy show with Cat Williams. And I can tell you, <laughs> the place was jam-packed. Right. All right? That was indoors. Mm-hmm. So all I'm saying is, if I can come to a Cat Williams concert and it be jam-packed, then I can't come to a church and it be jam-packed. Uh, uh, but again, it's, it's, it's what we've thought viewing as acceptable. And I'm telling you, Lucifer's influence, the devil, and the Bible makes it clear that Satan's influence in this world makes things acceptable and makes them a norm so nobody even questions them, you know. And, and and that's why nobody even questions not 
opening churches back up. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, okay, we probably shouldn't open churches back up. But the CDC doesn't say that. The CDC guideline says that you can open churches back right. up. So if this if the if the if the government says you can do it, and I'm, listen, I'm not trying to knock anybody who hasn't reopened. I'm just stating this, what the, what the guidelines say. Right. If the guidelines say you can open up, then the question is, why won't I open up? You know what 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 is causing me intellectually to make a decision to say I won't push the envelope for my God? Right. If Daniel would go in the lion's den mm-hmm. and risk getting eaten by the lions because they said, if you pray, this is what's going to happen to you. We preach it all the time about Daniel going in the lion's den. If them three Hebrew boys was willing to go into the fiery furnace, we preach it all the time, right? Because of their belief in the God that they served. And we have a CDC saying, you know, you can, you can come back in. But we're saying, I'm not even willing to go back into my pulpit. Right. With a mask on? With and a you, face and, shield on? And you already really social distance in the pulpit because ain't nobody around there. Yeah. And, 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 and but, but if Daniel can go, when Daniel went in the lines then he didn't have any knock, knock, he wasn't inoculated against teeth bites. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? When the guys went in the fire furnace, they didn't have any suits on protecting them from the fire. So even the people sitting in the pews, Right. If, 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 if my faith, their faith in God was such that they said, and this is what the three Hebrew boys said, whether or not our God will take care of us, we don't know. But we know what we do know, our God is able. So, again, that's why I'm saying we say God is first. If God is first, now, like why, why aren't we saying the same thing? I'm not saying that my God will keep me from catching COVID if I go to church. Right but I know my God is able and go. Right. Right. That's, that's my whole point is that, 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 that influence of, 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 let me read it for the, for the folk out there. Cause everybody might not have their Bibles. So let me read it for them. The Bible says this, wherein in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. It's telling us that our thought process in this world, it was based on the, how the prince of the air or the prince of this world, Satan, set the structure up. That's what it says. And it also says it calls disobedience, mm-hmm. right? Disobedience to who? Disobedience to God. So the question has to be then, am I allowing the world's thought process to cause me to be disobedient to God. If, if, if God says forsake not the assembling of the saints, why am I forsaking it? I'm not telling people not to use common sense. You don't tempt the Lord that God. You use common sense. I mean, right. I don't think God is upset with us about that. But I'm saying, because we are told to adhere to the laws of the land. That's what the scripture teaches us. Right. But if the laws of the land tell you you can open back up, why are we closed? Right. I don't know. I honestly, I honestly do not know. I, I've I've counseled some of the pastors in, in seminary at the college on how to do the you know the stuff online and to go live and and some of the and some of these people are going out and getting paying money for other companies to put them virtually. Let me let me, let me help you out a little bit. All right, you know, just between you me now, folk out there don't have to hear this. If you pass on a congregation and you're telling me that nobody in your congregation knows how to do Facebook Live, <laughs> you can't have but two people in your congregation. Yeah. And it can't be anybody in your congregation under 12. Yeah. Because there is not a 12-year-old in the United States of America they don't know how to put something out there live. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, see, that's the reality. I don't know why they thought they couldn't do it but let, unless they had expert help. I don't know why they thought they had to pay somebody. But let me tell you something. This, this is an old iPhone. This is iPhone 11. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay. I record two of the podcasts that go on our, st- our, our stuff with my iPhone. Yep. I'm just saying, you know, the reality is you don't need a lot of equipment to go live. You may not be looking like you WVEC. You may not look like BET. You may not look right. like any of that stuff, but it don't take a genius to go live. And that's, and that's essentially what I've told them. Like, this, what you're talking on, you know, this recorded up there, you, you're good to go. Well, well, my point to you is this. See, if you are, are allowing the prince of the air to influence your thoughts, then what happens is you find a reason not to do. Right. If you're relying, if you're doing the opposite, you find a reason to do. Right. You know, that's what I'm saying to you. So if a person, if they're, if a person's reasoning is says to them, well, I can't do it because, hold it, hold on for a minute. Again, we're talking about people who are, uh, I'm not putting them down, I'm putting them in perspective for people, right? We're talking about people who say this, I can do all things, things through Christ that strengthen me, but yet I can't get the word out? Yeah. See, that goes contrary to the word of God. That's my point to you. Lucifer is so cunning. Lucifer is so subtle in his ways that he will have us believing against what we just taught. Right. If, if, I, if I'm telling you I can do all things, and I know that it has been done out here in this, why in the world can't I do it if it, if it can be done? What, what Am I saying that God can't do it for me, but he did it for everybody else? Right. See, I'm just saying that to me doesn't make biblical logic, except for the fact that, and what I just read to you, is that when Lucifer will have us, he, he'll do it so subtle. It's like he had me going to a basketball game. Right. He'll do it so subtle that you'll think, you know what, I'm justified in not doing something because. Yeah. But that's not true. I, mean, I, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And if, if I'm saying God don't know how to help me put something out, when all you gotta do is, you know, is go go to the church and set up a. You ain't gotta put up a tripod. You can take and sit it <laughs> up on anything, and right. you know, boom, and, and and upload it. It don't take a genius to upload stuff. And if let's say you're my age, or I'm older than me, so that's why you say, "Well, I know how to do it." If you got a, a child, they know how to do it. If you got a grandchild, they know how to do it. Right. Right. Or somebody in the church is younger. Mm-hmm. Than, uh, you know. So anyway, I hope I. You know, I don't want to get on a soapbox, but I'm saying. It it, it 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 amplifies my point about how Lucifer impacts us. Not just in that, but it, but think about it. I mean, think about it now. Think about it from a real standpoint. He tempted Jesus, right? Right. And if he'll tell pastors what they can't do. Yeah. If he'll tell pastors what they can't do and have them believe in it, guess what he'll do for the average member out there? Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. So that that. To me, it's self. That, that, that speaks for itself as, as far as why we find ourselves in a position we find ourselves in when Lucifer is directing. Right. And, I, and I could tell you from, from my perspective, what's directly happened with me is I've had people come to me and ask me certain things. Mm-hmm. And I would tell, know exactly what to do. Oh, yeah, you do X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then after we done the conversation, now if I know what to do, why ain't I doing it myself? Mm-hmm. You know, you know, it's like cause like you said, fall under the influence. Well, you ain't got to do that. You just go over there, you know. Yeah, and, and, you know, and and it really is just that, you know, that straightforward. But again, I, you know, I, I wish people, I, I wish personally that people understood how crafty fallen angels are, how crafty Lucifer is, because if you don't give them that credit, you take them for granted, and that's mm-hmm. when they have you where right. they want you to be. And then also too, it's like that that one that question that they always uh, I think it was Google, who wins between a fight between a bear and a gorilla, and they're looking for the answer it depends upon the territory. Mm-hmm. And right now we're in basically walking around every day in Lucifer's territory. That's what the Bible says, you know, and and, and that's and that's it. And so if you're not, and, and you know, I I think it's you know certainly a, a good a good you know. Um, Follow up podcast might want to be on, you know, preparation. You yeah. know, how do you prepare? You know, how do you seriously prepare? Because, you know, if you're not prepared, you the okie doke will get you. I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter how 
how how how how how biblically sound you are in your knowledge. If you if you are not prepared, then the okie doke can 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 take hold. Yes, we probably should do a follow up because um, Ephesians six uh, verse uh, twelve it keeps on going to give you the tools that you need and and how to handle things. So yeah. we need to have a follow up on that because this one went kind of long. And like I said, I will put the chapters in there so you'll be able to go back and hit it at each point because we talked about a lot of good stuff here today. Thank y'all so much for listening. This is your host CB Baker. Till next time.